So here's an example Cauchy-Euler differential equation, uh, and it's a full initial value problem. So I've got the differential equation and two initial conditions. And the initial conditions are uh, specified at time one rather than time zero. Um, like I mentioned last time, there, there's some problems with time zero. So the problems are definitely clear when you look at um, like this kind of in case three, you have ln of t. You can't take ln of zero. Um, so that's that's pretty clear. Case two, you've got ln of t. You can't do ln of zero. Case one, it's not as clear that there's a problem, but uh, typically, like um, for example, if the m's are negative, you wouldn't want to look at zero to a negative power, right? That would be like dividing by zero. So there, there's just generally a problem with t equals zero. Um, yeah, so that's the reason the initial conditions are moved, shifted a little bit. Okay, so let's uh, let's do this one. So step one, guess x equals t to the m, plug in the guess. So I get t squared times, and then I'm just going to plug in the guess, m times m minus 1 uh, times t to the m minus 2. So what I'm doing right now is copying this stuff here over, and I'm just filling in what x prime prime, x prime, and x are. So this is x prime prime here. Plus 12t times, and now I'm going to put in x prime. That's m t to the m minus 1 plus 9 uh, t to the m. And that's just x, what I'm putting there, equals 0. And uh, then an overall factor of t to the m can be divided out, like we saw in the general setup. So you're just going to get m, m minus 1, plus 12 m, plus 9 equals 0. Uh, then simplify a little bit. So this is m squared minus m plus 12m plus 9 equals 0. So m squared plus 11m plus 9 equals 0. So then I guess uh, not saying a nice way to factor it with, so that there's integer roots, so I'm just going to use the quadratic formula. So m is going to be negative 11 plus or minus the square root of 11 squared minus uh, 4 times 9 all over 2. So negative 11 halves plus or minus the square root of 11 squared over 4 minus 9. And I'm pretty sure 11 squared over 4 minus 9 is positive. So it looks like I am in the uh, in case one, the two real roots case. So let me just call one of the roots m1 and the other one m2. So I've got m1 equals this, and m2 equals the. Uh, let me just be lazy and copy paste. that. Okay. And then my general solution is going to be c1 t to the m1 plus c2 t to the m2. But I've got some initial values to try to satisfy up here. So uh, those are all about x of 1 and x prime of 1, right? So one of my initial values is 2 should equal x of 1. Is that what it was, 2? Yeah, 2 should equal x of 1. And what is x of 1? So let me plug in 1 in here for a t. I just get c1 plus c2, right? And no matter what, no matter what m1 and m2 are, t to the m1 is just going to be 1 if t is 1. So okay, so the sum of c1 and c2 is 2, and then for x prime of t, um, what was that one? x prime of 1 is 0, so I'm supposed to get 0 equals x prime of 1 equals, okay, but I can, there's no way I can just compute x prime of 1 without making mistakes. I should compute x prime of t first, so 
at C1 M1 T to the M1 minus 1 plus C2 M2 T to the M2 minus 1. And now I plug in 1 and I get C1 M1 plus C2 M2. All right, so that's a system of equations. And, uh, you know, you might, this one is kind of nicer because I have a zero here, but you, so it's like already tr in triangular form kind of, but you might have, um, or I guess it's, it's not quite in triangular form, but s something similar. Anyway, you might have some more complicated algebra uh, showing up. So, totally feel free to use Mathematica or whatever algebra system solver uh, if you want to do that more quickly. Otherwise, go ahead and do it by hand. That's also fine. So I think I can start doing this one by hand, and if I get tired of it, then I'll use Mathematica. So the second equation tells me this. So that gives me, let's say, C2 in terms of C1. Right? C2 is negative C1 times negative M m1 over m2 times c1. Um, okay, m2 is definitely not zero, right? I haven't divided by zero. Uh, yeah, and uh, c1 is uh, 2 minus c2, according to the first equation. All right, so notice I, I'm just leaving the variables m1 and m2 as being m1 and m2 because I don't want to I don't want to rewrite this stuff all the time. Um, I notice sometimes when I'm looking at students' work that they they like to just rewrite things a million times. Or for example, like instead of writing 11 squared over 4, they would like compute what that is. But who cares about that, right? You can just type 11 squared over 4 into web work, and that will be fine even. And you don't have to rewrite things so many times in your work. Just give them names and then use the names. Um, yeah, so I'm going to continue solving. So that times 2 uh, plus m1 over m2 c2. So then I'm going to subtract that to the other side, and I get 1 minus m1 over m2. c2 equals... I hope you're watching this at double speed or something. So c2 is... And there's a nicer way to write this. Oops. Uh, I think if I just multiply a numerator and denominator by m2, probably it'll look nicer. Um, and I can put the minus sign in the denominator. So, okay, let me do that one at a time. So minus m1 times 2 all over m2 minus m1. And then let me flip it around. And see, uh, another thing is if you if you put in, if you didn't just keep them named m1 and m2 during your algebra work, and you had put in these nasty expressions, you would never notice a lot of nice, you would never get the chance to rewrite things nicely, right? You would just get stuck typing in a giant thing at the end. Okay, so 2m1 over m1 minus m2. Okay, so that's C2, and then C1, well, my easiest way to describe how C1 is related is that C1 is 2 minus C2. So 2 minus and this is uh, I bet there's a nicer way to do this. So 
let's see, 2m1 minus 2m2 minus 2m1, so I get minus 2m2. So 2m2 over m2 minus m1 if I don't want any minus signs in the front. Okay, so now I'm going to write down... Yeah, I mean, I have my particular solution, basically. So how about I just put it into Mathematica, test that it's correct, um, and I'll plot it and see what it looks like. Okay. So let me start by just typing this in. x of t, c1, t to the m1, oops, plus c2, t to the m2. Then I can say what are C1 and C2. So even if you do the algebra um, like I just did, like a, like a peasant, um, it's still helpful to go to Mathematica and just check that you got the right thing. Like I have no idea right now. I could have made a mistake in any place, right? So there's a saying that you should never compute anything unless you already know what is the answer. Um, trying to find, ah, right, I need to fill in what are m1 and m2. So let's say what these are, and then I'll also fill in what are c1 and c2. So I've got minus 11 halves plus That, and then the same thing, but with a minus. And if I can find what I got for C1, ah, 2m2. Over m2 minus m1. And for C2, I got 2m1 over m1 minus m2. Okay, so there, no errors, good. Now I can see, uh, so if I want to look at the full form, there it is. Um, oh, and here's a nice trick. This only kind of works, but you can copy, you can try to copy this as you know, plain text, or if you copy it as LaTeX, you could actually uh, put dollar signs around it and paste it into Nectar and it'll typeset it nicely like this. If you copy it as plain text, it'll give you something you can almost type into web work, but you'll probably have to change the formatting a little bit. Um, so this really can, can save some effort. Okay, and let's just check uh, that, the, that this really does solve the initial value problem. So three things, the differential equation and the two initial conditions. So let's try the initial conditions first, not x of zero, x of one. Well, that doesn't look like two, but Maybe if I simplify it. Okay, great, that is two. And then x prime of one, that is zero. Amazing, that algebra was correct. I'm kind of surprised. So, and finally, let's check the differential equation. So t squared times x prime prime of t plus 12t x prime of t plus 9 x of t. And it's all this stuff. Now imagine doing this by hand, trying to check that it solves the differential equation. Now I can simplify that. Please be 0. Yes. OK, now I can plot it confidently knowing that it really solves the original differential equation. Let's do t running from 0 0.01 to 5. I don't know. OK, cool. 10. Yeah, so that's interesting that it's kind of shooting down like that. So I wonder, what are m1 and m2? So all I did was I left them kind of in this, in this form, right? So I wonder what they are. So if I look at m1, it has this form. But like, what, what is a decimal approximation for that? Okay, it's some negative number. 
So definitely, so this is why I'm, I'm not starting it at t equals zero. If I put in zero, well, it doesn't complain, but it probably, you know, here's what will complain. If I just do x of zero, we've got uh, indeterminate. It's dividing by zero, basically. Yeah, and are they both negative? Yeah, so it explodes at t equals zero. Yeah, more. so this one is actually not that interesting to look at the plot because it ended up in case one, right? The, the really interesting ones, I think, are these ones. And uh, there, there should be a picture of that in the textbook. Uh, yeah, here it is. Stuff like this is what you end up getting, where it's like oscillating, but you know, as you send t closer and closer to zero, ln starts, uh, you know, changing more and more dramatically, right? Or becoming more and more negative, exploding down towards negative infinity, basically. And so, uh, as you go, as t goes closer and closer towards zero, the radiant angle that's being put in here is just blowing up. And so what does sine do in response to a blowing up radiant angle? Is it just keeps oscillating more and more. So you get these oscillations towards the origin. 